I'm a clinical psychologist here in Manhattan and the host of the Adult ADD Holistic Summit. Uh, and today I'm very happy to have Dana Rayburn, ADD and ADHD coach and uh, expert on many facets of adult ADD. And today we're going to talk about uh, being on time. So welcome, Dana. Thank you, George. Happy to be here today. So I think the first question is, um, we're going to first talk about a kind of an overview is, what are the real problems caused by being late? Yeah. We often look at being late as a problem for us, for ourselves. If we have ADHD, we, we center it around our us. But the, one of the real problems besides getting being in trouble at work and being stressed and having life be more complicated because we're late is that it makes it so people think we're selfish, we're self-centered. They, they think that we don't care about them. And to me, that was the one thing that helped me learn to be on time is when I realized that, wait a second, I'm looking at being late as my problem, but really it impacts my relationships. It impacts how people can trust me. Can they trust me to be where I need to be when I need to be there? Or is it always, always dealt with as this, oh, she's late again. And it's um, actually my dad used to call it Dana time that I was always 10 minutes late. And that was sort of the family joke. I've had clients whose their families have little songs about them that they sing when the person walks in late. And it, so it can be really shameful and it can impact our relationships with other people, especially George, if you're in the business world and you're late, it makes it look like you're just not very professional. So people realize that they can't trust you. And we have to shift that around. Right. And I think that's that uh, lack of trust and lack of accountability is not really felt so much. I mean, uh, you said some of these in these family situations, people would make a joke of it. But I think in the business world, it's, it's often um, you don't get promoted or you're not put on the team and you're not really aware of the lack of trust uh, in your in your su supervisors until it's really too late and you may, may even be asked to leave the company. Yeah, yeah and I'm, you've, I'm sure you've had uh, clients, and I've had them as well, that their, their jobs are on the line because they're not on time. The other thing that it does is it, that can be the spark that sets off the awareness of ADHD in, in a boss, is in an employer. Oh, this person isn't on time. So they start to pay attention and notice. And then all of a sudden they start to realize the other problems too. Well, their desk isn't organized and they're late on their deliverables. And, and so it can be the spark, the spark that snowballs a lot of the other ADHD problems at work. And so what do you think is the biggest uh, mistake people make in, um in being late? The biggest mistake that I find is we don't live in reality. And, and with ADHD, we don't live in reality anyway. We, we're, you know, we bounce around being unaware of what's going on in, in our world. And especially when it comes to being on time, um, we have to get realistic about how long it takes us to get ready in to get ready, especially in the morning or whenever you're leaving, we have to look at it logically. How long does it really take me to get ready? How long does it really take me to get out of the house or out of the office or wherever we're going from and to? How long does it really take me to get there? We are such horrible judgment judges of time. You've your viewer, our viewers probably have heard the phrase time blind, where we have this interesting relationship with time where we just, we can't grasp it, that we always think we can do things a lot faster than we actually can. So that's one of the biggest mistakes is, is living in this false reality that, oh, I can get ready in half an hour. Well, no, you can't. So I can get, I, we think we can teleport from our home into the car automatically when realistically most people it takes about 10 minutes to get out of the house in the morning even when they are ready so we've got to have a much stronger relationship with reality and i think another important factor is 
you know, a lot of my clients say, well, I, you know, I, I, I made it on time. You know, I'm here on time, but you know, they're out of breath and yeah. they're huffing and puffing. And I call it um, almost like falling out of a clown car. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you're, you're here, but you tumbled in and uh, you know, it's with me, you're your therapist. So I'm a little bit more patient and understanding and you're paying me. But if mm -hmm. I were paying you um, as a, as a supervisor or boss, I would, say you're not you know you're not really grounded and you're not very professional if you came into a meeting like that so being on time it's it's not just um you know a second before it's it's so i coach my clients to you know come and see what it feels like to sit in the waiting room for a few minutes before the session calm cool and collected and then come into my office like that yeah, that's a wonderful point, and I'm glad you brought it up because that's something that I realized myself in my journey of really becoming a great manager of my ADHD is my goal originally was to get places on time, but I had to, to broaden that goal to be get places a little early because my goal now is to arrive someplace calmly, peacefully centered, and that means a couple of minutes early. It means not, I love the falling out of the clown car. I will, I'm stealing that from you, George. <laughs> here, here, you heard it here first, that falling out of the clown car where you're, you know, you're running in and you're out of breath and your papers are falling all over the place. You can't find what you need. That's not a, a successful, peaceful way to live. Well, that's something else I, I talk about is uh, relation, uh, reputation management. Yeah. And, you know, that being cool, calm and collected has a lot to do with your reputation and how you show up and how you're paid. You know, there's this word gravitas and um, part of gravitas is time management and being places and, um, and, and coming into places, meetings, appointments, um, you know, with the with um, a level of calmness and to be respected. So. Yeah. The problem is a lot of my clients with adult ADD don't really recognize the uh, importance of that. Yeah. You know, because I was, you know, I um, still struggle with time management at times, but it was a lot worse. And I would always say to people, relax, it's just five minutes. I mean, what's the big deal? But I didn't live in the world that most people do of, you know, time is important. I thought everybody was relaxed. Maybe I should move to Hawaii or something. But <laughs> uh, maybe that sounds good. <laughs> but in the in here on the East Coast, it, you know, more, the majority of people value time. And as you said, it's a sign of disrespect uh, to be late. So let me tell you a quick story. I had a client at Juilliard, uh, the music music school, who had ADD, and he would show up five minutes late to his jazz band rehearsal uh, with a hot steaming coffee in his hand. And I said, what is the message of that coffee to your bandmates? That you're putting your needs first mm -hmm. before them in getting the coffee. Um, so, you know, but if you had come in on time and then after 20 minutes said, hey, can I run and get a coffee? Nobody's going to care. But it's the fact that you strolled in late with the hot steaming coffee that sends a message to the others that yeah. you, you just don't respect them. Yeah. And they're probably thinking, man, I wish I'd stopped and gotten a coffee but I didn't because I had to be here. You know, the other thing that we do, George, is when we're late, we, we fly in, fall out of the clown car, and then we start talking about all the problems that happened to us while we're late. Oh, the traffic was bad, or I, you know, I, I missed the train, or I couldn't find my keys, or you know, whatever the thing is. And we're, again, making it all about us instead uh -huh. of, what realizing that the other person's been sitting there waiting and if it's ADHD it's usually more than five minutes it's usually 10 15 20 minutes late right so it, it we really selfishness yeah yeah and what I do know about most people that I work with they're not selfish people they're incredibly caring and kind and thoughtful people but they don't know how to put the pieces in place to show that outwardly Right. So it's a huge disconnect with what's really going on in, in the ADHD adult's heart versus what's being displayed to the world. Okay, so um, I guess the question people want to know now is how to be on time. Yeah, and there's some... I just, you know, realizing 
we're going to be late and need to book more time in. Are there any tri uh, ticks, trips, uh, tips you teach? Yeah, yeah. It's there. There are a few key, a few key ones. The first one that, is, as far as getting out of the house in the morning, is get ready first, get your body ready first. So that means that before you're into your email, before you're turning on the news or whatever it is that you do, um, get out of bed, get your body all as ready as you possibly can first before you do anything else. Because that means you're not running around in your pajamas all of a sudden thinking, oh my God, I got to leave in 10 minutes and you, you can't go on time. So that just Getting ready first builds in an element of flexibility automatically. And, and then, George, we have to pair that with, with the reality that I was talking about a few minutes ago. It, and your timer is your best friend for here. I don't expect people to time every single day how long it takes them to get ready, how long it takes them to get out of the house. But if you can time it for two, three days and start to have a real, realistic expectation or awareness of how long it takes. I have never, in 22 years of doing this work, I have never had a client be accurate on how long it takes them to get ready. Yeah. They all underestimate it. I have never had a client say, oh, it takes me 15 minutes to get out of the house. They'll say it takes me five minutes to get out of the house. So making friends with reality. Um, Google Maps is is great because you can see how long it takes you to get somewhere now. I used to think it takes me eight minutes to get into town. It doesn't. It takes me 14 minutes to get into town. Well, no wonder I was always five to 10 minutes late. And so it's it's the two things, get ready first and get out your timer and break it down into steps so you actually know the pieces of being on time. And one of the handouts that I gave George that um, the listeners can, or viewers, I guess they are, can download is uh, it's my four step formula to being on time. And it really, it's just basically a timer and adding up a few numbers. And, and that's yes. what we need uh, to, do. to give us an overview of that uh, program. That, okay. That so the first thing you need to know is how long it takes you to get ready. And, and so you have a realistic expectation. And then you need to know how long it takes you to get out of wherever you're going. Um, I used to think I've got, I live in the country and I've got dogs. And so I would think, yeah, you know, you always let the dogs out before you leave. And then I would think, well, this will take me five minutes to get out of the house. Well, no, because the dogs don't always do what you think you're, they're going to do. So sometimes, you know, you got to run down to the bottom of the property and pull up the little naughty dog that won't come when I call him. And so it, I realized I need 15 minutes to get ready to get out of the house. You need to be able to find all your stuff. So having a launching pad, which is a really common ADHD solution, right, right by the door, a place where you put your keys, you put your phone, you put your wallet or your, your handbag or your briefcase or whatever it is you're taking. So everything is right there when you are pushing to leave. The other thing is how long it takes to get there. So how long, what's the travel time? Realistically, how long does that take? And then how long does it take to get from when you arrive wherever you're going into wherever you're going? So say it's your office and I don't know what the situation is, but you're in Manhattan. So I have a feeling it's not, you know, finding a parking place in front and running up the stairs it probably takes people a little while to get from wherever they can park into your office, up an elevator or wherever they are to get up into your building. So those are basically the four components. You add up the numbers, time it for a few days, add up the numbers, and then you have a more realistic view of how long it really takes to get somewhere on time. I really like that because often the second step and the fourth step are really not um, thought yeah. about. They're I mean, not at all. They think, well, I, I'll, it takes me 20 minutes to get ready, but there is um, always one more thing uh, to do in getting out of the house. Or you, as you said, if you don't have a landing spot for all your, your gear, you know, searching for your wallet and your watch and things like that takes time. So really building in, you know, five minutes uh, just to actually physically leave the, the house or apartment is important. Yeah. And then, like you said, yeah, the subway says it takes, you know, 20 minutes to get to my office, but then there's 
you know, four, yeah, three or four blocks. Yeah. Um, and it could be crowded. So yeah. So, and that's that could turn out to be the the difference between being on time or being late. Yeah. Exactly. Most people have a pretty common pattern. You know, they're like my Dana time was five minutes, ten minutes late. And most people have. You can when you start to pay attention to it, you can see where the gap where the where the break is in the system. You know, the other one that we do need to talk about, George, is getting home on time. So leaving the office on time, instead of thinking that one more thing, one more thing, I'll answer one more email, I'll do one more task. But you, you may have a family, you may have your, your partner, your spouse, or you're waiting at home for you. And you can't get out of the office on time to get home on time. And that causes relationship problems too that they're they're waiting for you and you don't show up again and that goes back to what we talked about at the beginning which was the trust factor yeah. in um and that being late has a, a real repercussions for a relationship yeah we got to look at it through the other people's eyes we just have to okay well um we covered your four-step formula and uh, some other um thoughts on being late uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you do and if you have any um, projects coming up or books or seminars or um, what you offer? Certainly happy to. I am an adult ADD ADHD coach. I've been doing this for 22 years so I'm one of the long timers in the biz. I work virtually with clients all over the world uh, mostly by phone, but do some Zoom as, if people want it. My, I work with private clients, but my uh, most popular program is the ADHD Success Club. And it's a, it's a comprehensive 11-month program um, of units and modules teaching every aspect that people need to know to build a successful life with ADHD. I believe very strongly that we are incredibly gifted people. We have a lot to offer the world, but often that's hidden behind this mask of ADHD and that we need to learn skills to get that out of the way. So I'm very focused on building the skills like we talked about today, how to be on time, how to manage your time, how to get through procrastination, you know, how to take care of your brain so your brain supports you the best it can, um, how to be organized, clutter clearing, all that stuff. So the ADHD Success Club is my, my big project. That sounds really uh, cool. And also I imagine there's a community aspect to it. Yes, yes. And that's the, that's the thing is that they're hearing each other on the calls each week um, and realizing I'm not the only one because you know, George, so often, with ADHD, we think we're the only one. We think right. we're the only one that's late. We think we're the only one that struggles. And you hear other people's stories and situations and you it's its a wonderful supportive community. And uh, how can people find that? On my website, it's danarayburn.com and uh, ADHD success. S Club is the page. But if you go to my website, DanaRayburn.com, you'll find it. I also send out a weekly newsletter that I people tell me is wonderfully helpful as well. So DanaRayburn.com, it's a lot of information. Well, thank you very much, Dana. It was a pleasure uh, to get to know you and talk with you. Um, and hopefully we'll, I'll see you around. Yeah. Thanks, George. Appreciate the opportunity. Bye. Bye-bye.